Hola gringos y gringos. We are Gringos Are Us, expats with a plan. And today's video, we're going to talk about this move that can save you money. How to go to Mexico through South Dakota. Coming up next. Welcome back everybody. This week we're going to talk about how to get to Mexico through South Dakota. <laughs> but before we start, we want to ask everybody please like the video if you get content out of it, subscribe to this channel, and as always, ring the bell so that you'll be notified of new content drops. We really appreciate your help doing that because it's helping our channel grow. Absolutely. You guys have been great in watching ours take off, and we appreciate all the help that you've given us. Yes. In doing some research, which you know we like to do, oh, yeah. I happened across an article about a gentleman who was inquisitive as to why in driving around Mexico, he saw an overwhelming number of South Dakota plates. <laughs> because in his mind, he went, well, there's nobody left in South Dakota because all the cars are down here. Yeah. So it prompted, hmm, let's do a little research. Why are there so many South Dakota plates in Mexico? Why are there so many South Dakota plates in Mexico? Because there's a lot of advantages to changing your residence to South Dakota. Hmm. Besides the fact that maybe if you're good enough, you get to put your head up there on Mount Rushmore. Here are some of the major advantages in moving on paper to South Dakota before becoming an expat. And before we get too deep into that, just know that one of the largest groups of people that happen to do this sort of move on paper are yeah. people who have RVs. Absolutely. That's the overwhelming majority are the people who actually don't necessarily leave the country. They're actually living out of their RV and traveling the country. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they've chosen South Dakota is because of the reasons we're going to talk about now. Yes, reason number one. And that's a big one that we all like saving. Taxes. Tax man. Absolutely. <laughs> the taxes in South Dakota, well, how about more if we say the lack of taxes in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. There are one, no state income tax. Two, no pension taxes. Three, no personal property taxes. And four, no inheritance taxes. So you're able to save on all of those and come out with a little bit more in your money, be it coming from Social Security, your pension, or whatever, you got more of it going into your pocket instead of into someone else's. All right, now let's talk now, about vehicular registration. Well, why are they riding around Mexico with all these South Dakota tags on there? Well, the main reason is you can, number one, Register remotely. You don't even have to go to South Dakota to register your vehicle there. Nope. But you do have to be a resident. Yep. And we're going to get to that one here in just a second. But number two, no annual inspection. One of the things that Gina and I were looking at when moving from North Carolina to Mexico was that once a year, we were going to have to drive the vehicle back up if we went with temporary and have it inspected every year. In North Dakota. Or in North Carolina. In North Carolina. If we were going to North Dakota, then we'd just stop in South Dakota and do the whole registration. I swear there's only water in there. I know. Only you, water. That's what she says. But, <laughs> yes, no. So, you know, that, that's a long drive going from just about anywhere in Mexico back to North Carolina. Lack of an annual inspection and being able to register remotely. Those are the two reasons on the vehicular registration. Now... now to get that, you gotta have a driver's license. 
Well, you, you got to be a resident of the state. That's true of just about all 50 states. And if you're going to register your vehicle there, you got to be a resident. Well, how do we become residents, Mark? Well, it's not very hard. Number one, one of the big things that's going on in South Dakota is there is a plethora of mail services. Mm -hmm. And these mail services do everything from receiving your mail and then sending you scan PDFs mm -hmm. so that you're able to say, pitch it or save it. And then at the end of the month, for a modest fee, they actually send it to you. Mm -hmm. Some of them also have the notary publics that are required to help get your residency in South Dakota. And there's a few that actually offer um, insurance for vehicles and for health, which those services are more for the RV crowd than they are the expat crowd. Right. But we're going to need some place in the U.S. to get all of our mail. And though these services range anywhere from $19 a month to about $40 a month, depending upon how much mail you think you're going to get mm -hmm. and how many pieces you want them to be able to send to you. But since you're not spending money on any of those taxes... That's a little easier to afford. <laughs> but the key is, those are not P.O. boxes. Those are physical addresses. And so you are able to use that physical address. Mm -hmm. You go to South Dakota. You spend a night or, Air two. or two in an Airbnb or in a hotel or in a campground, which a lot of these mail services also have campgrounds for their RVers, but they provide you with that physical address. You take the copy of your receipt from either an Airbnb, a hotel, or one of the mail service campgrounds, and you go to DMV. And you take your old license, you take the copy of the receipt, you take a, another form of ID, which if we're going to Mexico, we gotta have a passport, so we take our passport. Yep. The only other thing they require is one other acceptable form of identification that has your social security number on it. It can be a tax form, be it a W-2, 1099, anything that's got your full name and your full social security number on it. You go to your DMV in whichever city in South Dakota you choose to go to. And you only have to have this residency for 24 hours. That is correct. And you get a South Dakota driver's license. Okay, so now you have a driver's license. You're now a resident of the great state of South Dakota. ka -ching! Which means you're not paying the taxes. You're not having to drive your vehicle back up to be inspected every year. Nope. Driver's license There's is only good for five, five years. years. Now, you can renew it one time remotely, which means you only have to go back once every 10 years. Unless, if you are challenged with eyesight and having to wear bifocals or trifocals, you have to go back in person every five years because they want to check your vision. <laughs> the other thing is, is if you make a name change or if you change your classification of driver's license, i.e. add a motorcycle or go up in class, then you also have to go back to do and facilitate those changes in person at the DMV. Short of that, you can actually go 10 years without having to go back to South Dakota to get your driver's license taken care of. There's got to be a catch. There isn't. <laughs> the beautiful thing about this is the state of South Dakota is fully aware and embraces this practice. Over 5% of the vehicles in South Dakota that are registered in there are on the road, not even in the state. Mm. And it has become an absolute boon for them in fees that they collect on the driver's license and fees that they collect on their vehicle registrations. And they're not outrageous. It was $35 for a driver's license. So it's, okay. it's actually less than what we pay in North Carolina. So Mark. What? 
what do you do if you get called up for jury duty? I'm going to drive you to the airport so you can catch a flight. No. I'm going to respond <laughs> because I don't want them issuing a contempt of court. So what you do is you respond to the clerk of the court of the county that you got the jury summons from. Mm -hmm. When you get that summons, you contact them and you let them know, I'm out of the country. Excused. Okay. So let's talk about these mail services a little bit. There are a lot of options. There are. There are two that really stand out for me. Uh, I'm going to put links below so you can see them. Uh, they come re recommended by some other YouTubers and expats as well. And one of the things is when we first started investigating doing mail services, there was one in the state of North Carolina mm -hmm. and they had ones all over. Mm -hmm. And I think they had 20 or 30 offices. And we were like, why do they have one in South Dakota? Uh huh. Now we know why. Yep. <laughs> because you need that address. What about absentee voting? That's a biggie. Because we all want to be able to do our civic duty and participate in the elections. So, it is as simple as this. You register when you get your driver's license to vote in that particular county. Then, you go on to the elections official in that particular county, and this can all be done online. You go to that particular election official's website, you enter the information, and you ask for what they call a UOCAVA, or a UOCAVA for those of us in the know, but it stands for the Uniform and Overseas Citizens Absentee Voting Act. And this was passed in part because South Dakota embraces this whole idea of registering there and going all around this country or other countries. Mm -hmm. So you go through the portal, you fill out the request for a ballot, and they're gonna respond accordingly. You have to fill out the Federal Form 76A. This form is also done online. Online. But that form has to be filled out, then it is returned to the elections official in your county, and once they've approved it, they now know that when they make your absentee ballot available to you so that you can download it and fill it out and then resubmit it electronically, it is also there to include anything that's on the federal ballot. Oh, well, you know. But if, if for some reason there should be a constitutional amendment or anything like that, right. that all would go on there. Of course, that also goes to the state because the state has to ratify it. But anyway, that's how you get all of this information about how to vote. You gotta tell me I need to stop moving my hand. I'm rattling. He's rattling. So, but that's, that's how you get it. And it all comes to you through the internet and you're able to participate in all elections. All right, so that's basically it. South Dakota, who would have ever thought that? Not me. Not me either. But I tell you this. I like the idea of having more money in my pocket. So we want to say thanks. I do my money dance. Do my I money do my dance. Money no, dance. let's not do the money dance. I do dance. my money dance. <laughs> we want to say thank you for spending the time with us. And remember, we are Gringos Are Us, expats, expats with, with a, a plan. plan. We're, We're doing, doing it. it. You, you can, can too. too. Hasta la vista. Adios.